Did, did you go, come down with a con flu? Yes. Yeah. We both. Mm. He got it first, oh, yeah. and then I got it, and I didn't think it was too bad until like yesterday, <laughs> when I woke up with no voice and a raging migraine, and like I have a voice mostly right now, but. I'm keeping the halls close by because I've been having coughing fits all day and offending my cats. Um, so good times. Dottie barks at you when you cough. Yeah, Dottie doesn't like it when we cough. So if you cough around Dottie, she chitters at you. Because Dottie doesn't really meow. She chitters like a little chipmunk. So if you cough, all of a sudden, even if you can't see her, you hear... Bah, 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 bah. Cover your mouths, humans. You're <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> And she'll just walk up and get in your face and be like, meh, 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 meh. And Simba, Dan was nice enough to close the bedroom door this morning so I could get some sleep. And that offended Simba because he did not get his morning pet. So he's been shunning me all day. So I'm really offending all the cats right now. Except outside cat who you know, is quite jazzed that we're feeding her and doesn't know that next week I'm going to trap her and bring her to the vet because I think she's pregnant. Oh, no. How she, her, her belly is getting awfully big and round. So we're going to bring her to the vet and see if she's pregnant and try and find her a nice home so she doesn't have to be outside all winter. <laughs> she's going to love that, you realize. Yeah, I yeah. know. Jeez. But I don't want her to be outside and be cold, and we're moving, and then there's going to be nobody to feed her. That's a point, I guess. So I when gotta find when are you moving? Probably March. Uh, okay. That's the goal. We're looking for March. Um, and it's going to be very scary. Why? We're going to fly with three cats. Yeah. How? How are you... We're gonna we're gonna conscript another person to fly with us. Because Southwest will let you take one cat as a carry on. So I'm gonna have Simba. He's gonna have Dottie, and then we're gonna enlist somebody to take Peggy. And I'm sure Simba and Peggy will sing the song of their people. For and the then hand flight. out drink coupons to everyone around us. We're gonna get like I'm very sorry cards printed. I think. <laughs> Just be like, look. It's better than sitting him in a car for three days. I did. Gr Grady was fine in the car for two days. <laughs> yes, Grady is only one cat, and Grady okay. doesn't have emotional problems. He doesn't. Grady was never on behavioral meds because he kept trying to take chunks out of people. <laughs> All right, point. That's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Grady so. is many things. Dangerous is not one of them. So that's going to be a thing. Well, we still have months to to worry and and fret. Yeah, we got it. we got yeah. we got some time before we got to jump off that cliff. All right. Well, speaking of jumping off cliffs, let's get let's jump into the nonsense. That was a terrible segue. I don't care. My show. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out and look worldwide interwebs fight all sorts of horrible stuff bring back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you this is kind of a strange week oh hi peggy i say that a lot but th this this doesn't feel like one of our normal weeks it's it's very eclectic this this week okay um, last week was a weird week we're gonna start with um with this one and i all right we are in a time when marijuana. I can't say words. We're in a time when marijuana Baba is. Mawa Wawa. Ba Hello, I'm Baba Wawa. That's a joke that's going to go over like every. All, all the people like, who? I don't understand that reference. I don't, I don't get it. Is that a new anime? <laughs> um. We're in an era where marijuana is practically legal. Yeah. Depending on where you go. Listen, I'm moving to a state where it's legal, so I'm going to do this show baked all the time. <laughs> you should just know that. You, you should have seen her when I told her about that they make Rice Krispie treats with weed in them. Go easy what? on those. 
They will catch we've up reached, to you quickly. We've reached the apex of our ability as a species, I think. Okay, so and this next story, this story takes place in Delaware, which is not that far from D.C., which is where weed is legal. Okay. So what I'm getting to say is, number one, this was all very unnecessary. And number two, when they say 130 pounds of weed in the story, <laughs> they are not kidding. Wow. Okay. Dude didn't even bother to, like, bundle it. Because yeah, every time someone says, like, pounds of weed, I'm thinking of, like, those those nice, neat blocks that you right. see in all the drug movies. Not like Fucking trees. No, like a Christmas tree jammed it's, in his van. Right? It, this is what I'm thinking. See, when you said that, you know what I thought of? What? 250 pounds of pudding. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right number, but you know what I mean. It's not such a bad little tree. <laughs> it just needs a little love. <laughs> <laughs> I what? A uh, Delaware man arrested with a 131-pound pile of marijuana in stolen van. Delaware man arrested Tuesday in Dover was rolling in a stolen van stuffed with weed. Literally stuffed with weed. Jacal McDonald, 24, was arrested after a search of a van stolen out of state. Pulled up a thicket of more than 131 pounds of pot. Uh, McDonald also had 73 grams of marijuana on him. And Donald was released after posting $65,000 bond. Six, how, where did you get up $65,000 or $6,500 for the got 170 pounds of weed. Faces possession, uh, charges of possession with intent to deliver marijuana, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, and tampering with physical evidence. What's I, think I, I think I realized why we didn't see neat little bricks. Because look at this dude's beard. That's <laughs> true. You gotta yeah. trim that shit. You gotta brush the beard, fellas. You gotta trim the beard. You gotta brush the beard. Maybe put some oil in it. All right. First of all, here's this is this is where we 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 encounter capitalism here. Um, how is it even possible to compete now with with these these big companies who are are, are coming in and investing in weed and they're, they're coming out with you know, nice polished products and then you have Jaquel here. <laughs> with a bush he crammed into a minivan I mean he could just let you sit in the van <laughs> while he lights a match <laughs> and you could die you know what's messed up here about this um, <laughs> here we go how the law works here um, had he actually taken this weed and put it into the nice little neat bricks it wouldn't be 131 pounds. <clears throat> the reason it's 131 pounds is he crammed the entire bush in there. And there's the branches and everything. And when they they count that, they count that as the drug weight, even That's though it's bullshit. not. It is, even though it's not technically the drug weight. Nobody's out here smoking the stump on a weed tree. No. But it's it's like the same thing with uh with LSD. They they don't count the amount on the paper. They weigh the paper. So when you get busted for a weight of LSD, the weight of the paper is included. Well, yeah, but how are they going to figure out the, the the amount of 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 the dosage just based on, you know, they they test it. They have to do police work. Not just buy a scale. I might have to have Dan tag in. <laughs> No, but it's a new age. Jaquel, you got to compete. You got to have some pride in your work. Yeah. You got to be, be branding. Right. It's like shit. People, everybody on YouTube's got a 4K camera now. <coughs> you got like professional editors doing their shit. It's, yeah. it's hard out here. You got to hustle. Same thing for you, man. It's like <coughs> making videos for YouTube, selling weed. It's the same thing, right? You got to up the quality of your product as exactly. the market does the same. Exactly. Uh, next. <laughs> and also, I have to point out, if you have $6,500 for bond, you can 65, buy. 
thousand. What? No, that that's the uh, the bond is sixty five thousand. That that's that, that's the bail. But if he was able to put the bond up, oh okay. Regardless, y'all had money to buy your ass a used car. You didn't have to steal somebody's shit. You could have bought a lot of ready made weed. This is true, you know. And not had to do all the pruning. Next up, this it's this is uh, uh, some of the weirdest police misconduct I've ever seen. Um, we've seen a lot of police misconduct over the years here in America. Um, some of it has been terrible. This is just baffling. As why in God's name would you put yourself in this position, you idiot? Fake arrest of scantily clad uh, women lands Florida police officer on leave. Videos posted to social media on Monday evening show a uniformed police officer escorting three lingerie clad women in handcuffs to the door of Miami Beach Police Department. Uh, the fake arresting officers identify an official statement as Richard Beaker. Uh, in the first video, Beaker is seen escorting the three women to the front door of the police station in an apparent follow up video. Beaker is seen uh, uh, on a police-issued ATV speaking with the women who appear to thank him for helping them out. No problem. I like to protect and serve, Beaker said just before driving away. Videos were posted to an Instagram account belonging to Fran Francia James, a Playboy cover model and performance artist from Miami, uh, who appears to be one of the women in handcuffs. James tagged fellow mo models Julianne Kissinger and Maddie Bell, whose accounts are also verified by Instagram. I was about to say, this sounds like the beginning and the end of a porn. It's, it's, it, it, I think it actually is the beginning and the end of a porn. It just doesn't have the porn in there, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the trailer for the porn. It's porn without the porn. Yeah. That's like, that, you ever, that. like you go on Pornhub and sometimes the free version of the video is just like the two minute trailer and you have to pay if you want the full video. <laughs> That's that's how you do porn in the Instagram age. You have yeah. to, you, you have to, you know. I, why would you, why would you put your job into to, to, to for some Instagram models want a cop to do a thi a bit with them? Well, because there's an awful lot of men out there who think with their penis and do stupid, stupid, stupid things in the vain hope. That that woman will touch their penis. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say um, they did not touch his peepee. But they might have. They you might. Have. Know. The one chance you don't take is the day your penis doesn't get touched, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> I just quote me on that on Twitter. What? What? Don't use your police issued shit. Cause all right, there yeah, are your rules. Uniform. Yep. The ATV, the guns. There's rules for this stuff. Most times, if you want to shoot uh, any sort of video in and around a police station with actual real police, you have to get releases signed. You have to get permission. You have to get. The, the city gets involved because you have the name of the city on there, so yep. that has to get permitted. Like, I didn't know in movies, whenever you see somebody in a military uniform, Dan taught me this, there's always something wrong yeah. with it. Because mm -hmm. you can't use a real military uniform, so even just, like, if one of the medals is wrong, like, there's always something not right about it. Yeah. This, and I didn't know that. This is, this is, you can't just guerrilla marketing this crap, okay? They, they don't take that lightly. You cannot endorse Instagram models in for your the, uniform. No, you can't do that for the police. And take them to the fucking police station and film there. Just... Yeah. You know some the person who busted him was, was one of his... There's a thin blue line they talk about all that, but not for this bullcrap. You know, th there's a lot of stuff they That's will... only for, like, murdering people who aren't white. Right, right. Not for half naked women. That's that's yeah. that's that's Don't not cover that. Only murder. Yep. 
Let's see. All right. This next one. But brother. Oh, my God. A lot is an understatement, Tara. Almost all of us think with our penis. See, I know that. But I don't want to get I don't want 4000 not all men's in the fucking YouTube comments. Oh, you will. That, Which that I'll happen anyway, anyway. Because I have a uterus and I said a thing. <laughs> but maybe we'll only How get dare 2, you? maybe we'll only get 200 hashtag not all men why does Tara hate men this show was better before Tara was a feminist <laughs> <sighs> so let's let's uh oh god this next one you seen super bad no no I have not oh, yeah. it's one of those teen I comedies from from a few years ago, um, features what's her name? Um, Emma Stone. Emma Stone and what's his name? Who's like uh, from who did Moneyball and now he's too important for everybody. Jonah. Something? Yeah, yeah. Hill. Jonah. Yeah. Um. So I saw it. Dan saw it, and apparently the uh, the the kid in our next story saw it. Here. Really. Underage bar patron busted for McLovin license. Oh, huh. <laughs> Under a movie, but I get that. <sighs> an underage collegian who was caught drinking booze early today in an Iowa bar is facing a phony ID charge after cops reported spotting a, quote, fake Hawaii ID with the name McLovin in his wallet. He looks so pleased with himself, too. According to a 12.30 a.m. check, the airliner bar in Iowa City, cops questioned Daniel Burleson while he had an alcoholic drink in his hand. Burleson, 20, admitted he was enjoying a mixed drink containing vodka. After the University of Iowa business student was escorted from the premises, he gave police ID, which showed that he was under 21. When cops asked Burleson for his fake ID, he denied having one. <clears throat> Seeing a bomb, Burleson then took out his wallet and began shuffling through it. That was where police could see the deaf's fake Hawaii ID with the name McLovin and a June 1981 date of birth. <laughs> yeah. Burleson told officers that he got the ID off of Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, buddy. To... Okay. The whole point of the fake ID is no one is supposed to know it's a fake. Yeah. You're, it's supposed to fool people. If you are using one of the most f famous fake IDs of the modern day. Yeah. Who are you fooling? Why don't you just make up business cards that say Abe Froman, Sausage King of Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it just, and yeah, he's so pleased with himself. I got arrested. <laughs> Don't definitely let me pl pledge that frat now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Honey, was the vodka really worth it? I know, right? Vodka's never worth it. <laughs> well, you're a snob. <laughs> and I think part of it is like, Alcohol was never that mysterious to us because my dad, when we were kids, always gave us a sip of his scotch. He'd give me the cherry out of his Manhattan. Like, we got a sip of stuff. So, like, I wasn't desperate to drink when I got to college because I'd done it already. Like, for my yeah. 21st day, I went to the casino. Oh, yes. Grownups, they drink lighter fluid. Good to know. Right. Like, and I got <laughs> drunk at six and went to see Annie on Broadway. So, like, you know, been there, done that. It's. it's uh, I I'm just offended by the fact that that he that, number one it worked because Can you someone possibly be pooping again. I would just like to point out she's talking to Simba, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I know can possibly be pooping again, but Simba dropped a nice stinky bomb right before we went on the air. He does every week. Yeah. No, what, what what's offending me here is not only did this work because obviously he's sitting there with freaking booze, so yeah. it worked. <laughs> True. <laughs> who fell for that? Some what? Well, who fell for that? 
I, th I think they fell for it in the way that he was holding 50 bucks in hand for a bottle of vodka. Fell for it. What? No, what? Officer, he had an ID. I, I, I'm I, just, it's not my fault. It's, it was, he had the ID, right? It's from Hawaii. I bought it. Sure. He's 50. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, But it's just... I've, I'm I'm kind of upset that not only did it work, but he bought it off Amazon. I know. Like when we were at Comic Con, there was a booth that was selling all different IDs from different like mm. different pop culture IDs. Like you could get Scully's FBI right. ID or a, a, a Shield ID. They were literally just like color printed and laminated. Right. And they were selling them for five bucks a pop. Like. But I don't expect anyone to actually believe that I'm Dana Scully, FBI, because <laughs> of a $5 thing I bought at Comic-Con. And yet, well, speaking of trying to get one over on someone, this next one is New Jersey. Jersey! Um, this is probably the sad one of the I, I want to say the saddest but something's gonna one up it one day this is one of the saddest things I've ever heard of anyone being arrested over I, this come on this 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 was the one women charged after bingo cheating attempt oh come on <laughs> police in New Jersey say a church bingo night a church bingo night went awry when it was discovered that two players had taped a called number onto their card in order to claim a bingo win. I've told you about the bingo bitches, man. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fuck around. The skaters say 71-year-old Teresa Davis and 38-year-old Keisha Brockington Said they had the winning card carrying a prize of nearly two hundred dollars Thursday at Saint Mar. Two hundred dollars. That's so not worth it. At Saint Maria Garetti Church Hall. So the, but a church volunteer noticed one of the winning numbers had been taped over on the card. Camden residents were charged with improper behavior under a borough ordinance. Parish official says it's the first issue in twenty plus years of bingo games at the church. I can't believe you get you can get arrested for that. I just imagine it playing out like like one of those old Wild West scenes. Where yeah, I thought they just poker. I thought they just did street justice. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, like when the bingo ladies thought I was not old enough to operate the ball machine, there was almost a fucking riot. My I, job was to pick the ball up and hand it to the caller, and I was not old enough to do that at sixteen. And there was almost a fucking riot. So I thought they would just get beaten to death or something. I this is civilized. And it's Jersey. Yeah. And John says, now you're an asshole and Jesus is disappointed in you. <laughs> well, no, John. What what happens here is if you if you if you undertake if if you study the 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 whole uh idea of John the Baptist and and the and, and the idea of that outside, that means Jesus can be disappointed in you anywhere. Doesn't have to just be in church. Jesus can be disappointed in you everywhere. Thanks, thanks. To that, that's how the Baptists. Well, work. that's Catholicism. <laughs> Jesus is disappointed in you. Yeah, but you can only you can only like get clear with him in one place. You got to go. You got to. You have to actually go yeah. out with baptism. But he can be disappointed with you everywhere. Right. Well, with baptism, yeah. it's like Uber Eats. You can get clear of it anywhere. Oh yeah, with, with with Catholicism, you can you have to actually go to the place. It's like carry yeah. out and delivery. So, huh? Um. <laughs> anyway, you scheme to defraud the church. Oh, two hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's not even it's actually trouble for two hundred dollars. It's not like it was the ten thousand dollar jackpot. No, it's it's not like you know. You, it's not like Powerball here. No. It's church, and you not only did you do that, you did it so badly. They spotted it. Um, this number's taped on. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. I just scotch tape. I just pull it right off. No, no, you didn't. Two hundred dollars. You gamble in church if the church says so. 
Yeah, bingo is technically you can gamble in church if it's making the church money. Yeah, that's <laughs> technically the yeah. rule. This this well, this is the same organization that devised the concept of the plenary indulgence. Okay, right. you know hypocrisy is baked right in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just I mean, you're going to you. I just I, I could just the poor the booking agent was just sitting there like they did what they what <laughs> they did fucking what. <laughs> Hey, you know what? This is a misdemeanor, too, no less. It wasn't even a grand theft. This was petty theft. I can't believe you go to jail for that. Apparently, there's a borough ordinance for improper behavior. I would think you would just get plain old kicked out or beaten to death by old ladies with troll dolls. What are you in for, Martha? She did it, bingo. <laughs> like, I figured they'd handle it fucking Sons of Anarchy style. <laughs> <sighs> oh good lord all right um I, I i'm gonna go ahead and assume that everyone uh watching is familiar with what the concept of offense is in terms of crime right y'all you all y'all yeah. hmm? the person that sells the stuff you stole right it's your middleman for selling stuff that to, to, to plausible deniability they know a guy who knows a guy they can move the merchandise and get paid for it that's offense it's sarah paulson in oceans eight right um <laughs> but there there is we don't like middlemen nobody likes middlemen but sometimes when you try to cut out the middleman you've got to be a little canny about it this guy was not Texas man steals from Target, tries to sell items in the parking lot. <laughs> okay. A man who stole nearly $400 in merchandise from Target was busted in the parking lot trying to sell the products. Wichita Falls police uh, were called to the 4300 block of Camp Boulevard on, sun on Saturday just before 4.30 p.m. When they arrived, police were told the suspect had a stolen phone a Roku device, and bed sheets, and was trying to sell the items in the Target parking lot. One of these things is not like the others. Loss prevention officials told police they saw the man, Daryl Largent, 42, exit the store with an open cell phone and a Roku box without paying for either of them. Search of Largent revealed a Dallas Cowboys polo, Verizon cell phone, Samsung cell phone, Roku device, a watch set, a hand towel, and a sheet set. Total value of the items was Three hundred seventy-four dollars and ninety-three cents. Largent was charged that is for a random ass assortment of things. Just grab whatever and tried to sell them in the park. Hey man, hey man, you want a Roku? Got you a Roku? No, you want a sheet? <laughs> <laughs> you want a Cowboys polo? You you want to wipe your face? Got a hand towel? You want to wipe my face? Face dirty? I got gotcha. you. What is? Sell it on like Craigslist. You know, I I I've heard movies. You know, movie scalpers. What they'll do is they'll show up outside the movie or the concert or whatever with the tickets. Yeah. But in that case, that's people who are directly there waiting for that one item. Everybody's yeah. there for that one it's item. On a weekend, we had to walk through tons of people that were like, "You need tickets, tickets, tickets." This is not that. No one is going to. No one is specifically going to Target. Well, I could get the sheets inside, but this gentleman in the parking lot is offering me a discount. And he seems reputable. That seems like a good idea. You... <laughs> Look, if you're going to do the crime, you need to get the appropriate contacts. Yeah. Hook yourself up. You need networking. Just like everything else in life, it's all about networking. I'm sure I've told this story before, but back when I worked at Old Navy, there was a kid who got walked out of the store in cuffs. Mm. We found out it was because he and his girlfriend had a two man scheme going. She worked at the hospital and when patients, she worked in the surgery ward and when patients would be under for surgery, she would go through their wallet <laughs> and like write down their credit card numbers. Jesus Christ. And then they would buy stuff. And the way that he got caught was he shopped and he bought a bunch of shit at the old Navy on a stolen credit card. And he used his employee discount. 
And the thing I could never figure out is it's not your money. <laughs> Why are you trying to save a buck? It's not your like buck. Healing. So what the fuck do you care about getting your employee <laughs> discount for? <laughs> Oh. That's how he got caught. He got walked out of the store in cuffs, and I was like, "Wow, what a fucking moron!" <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even go to a different store to do it. Did well, it in our store. The last one. Everything this week has seemed more or less kind of tame, just a little weird. So, of course, our last story this week is right the fuck back in our warehouse, a wheelhouse. Naked man raked havoc on business, then showered. Raking havoc is dirty business. <laughs> Florida man was found nude inside a plumbing business, facing charges after being accused of using a forklift and a hammer to wreak havoc before taking a shower there. Um, 24-year-old Joseph Michael Bienick was confronted by an employee at United Plumbing on Friday. The employee told Lee County deputies... He was working late in the warehouse. That's where the word was stuck in my head from. And went to investigate a noise when he found Bianic standing naked and clutching a hammer. All right. <laughs> is the hammer his penis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. Good. Tara, I think that one is um, almost 20 years old. Really? Yeah. Wow. That was early, mid early 2000s yeah early it's from back when people still like nathan fillion yeah joss whedon um the employee said bianic didn't threaten him surveillance video showed bianic causing destruction to the plumbing business and a neighboring business Two face two charges of burglary and returns to resisting arrest larceny and criminal mischief what happened here yeah why I, it, I'm just imagining he walks out and there's the dude naked with a hammer. Um, hello? Hiya! Do you need help? No, we're fine. We're doing great. Got a hammer. I don't suppose you're the guy that trashed the place. No! What's, what? Totally what? different naked guy with a hammer. Yeah! What is why in the a forklift and a hammer? A for why why the forklift? Why the hammer? Why were you messing things up? Why were you naked? Why did you take a shower? What happened? That's pretty and sweaty, fucking shit up with the hammer and the forklift. <laughs> you don't want to leave DNA evidence everywhere in ash. <laughs> I mean, God. What happened? Why in the? He didn't apparently steal anything. He just smashed shit. What is... What? A plumber ran off with his wife, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we, what well, just this... Oh, all right, there's another, I've got, I've got, there's another, uh, uh, okay, well, there is, uh, there's a picture. Is there? There's pictures, yeah. Let me. Uh, oh, there's net split. Hey, net split. Um, I'll give you the link to the. Uh, th th there's a. This was just the AP report. There's there's a local report too. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, th there he is. Wow. Oh, hi. There, there, there's there, there's one of those uh, mug shots. Um. Video shows Bianic entering Imol property, smashing the windows on several trucks, building doors, and a window. It's also seen using the hammer to smash a front door. Um, video shows him entering United Plumbing Building, taking a forelift. He used to drive into a fence at Imold, creating an opening. Uh, after returning to United Plumbing, video showed Bianic entering a restroom, removing his clothes, and taking a shower. After showering, he entered, exited the office. <coughs> what in the name of... He didn't even steal any. I still don't understand why. We know more of what, but not why. Yeah. This is one of those things that's going to bug me. <clears throat> and then to just greet someone when they come in, like, sup? 
I mean, whenever I have done wacky stuff, what I should not have done in my life, I, I think I had a reason for it at the time. Maybe not a very good one, <coughs> but I had a reason. Whiskey? What? Maybe that reason was whiskey? Explains a lot in my life. <laughs> but even still, this this is I'm this I'm gonna be deciphering this one. Yeah. I need like a freaking code dick wheel ring. Like you just had to go in and break all their stuff. That's break all the windows cool. and just then take and then take a shower with a hammer and a fork. What happened? And why'd you bring the hammer into the shower with you? <laughs> If it wasn't for my horse, <laughs> I wouldn't have spent that year in college. Yeah. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, we need more information. Why did you have to get your dick out, man? We need, we need to get this show picked up by, like, Comedy or Central or something. Wouldn't that be great? Who will give us the budget. We go and find... Find these people and be like... Tell us what happened. And now you know the rest of the story. Tell us how you came to be naked running down the highway with a chicken around your neck. <laughs> I just, I, the first thing we've learned this week is, you know, if you're going to be naked with a hammer smashing stuff, have a reason. At least have a fucking reason. It might not even be a good one. Just have one so you're not... You're hurting people, man. We're trying to figure this out. Yeah. We have a livelihood, goddammit. Um, we've Nobody learned... thinks about us. We've learned that uh, you can't pro-am crime. It usually no. doesn't work out very well. We can't downsize that. No. Yeah. Um, we... We've learned people in New Jersey take that bingo shit seriously enough to piss. Take, they take bingo seriously enough to piss off God. People everywhere, at least up here, people everywhere take that bingo shit seriously. Enough to piss off the Lord Almighty. Yeah. To risk don't, your eternal soul. If you find yourself in a bingo hall, don't fuck with them. They'll kill you. We, we've learned the whole point of a fake ID is to fool people. Yeah. Not make a meme reference. Yeah. It's McLovin, get it? No, you're going to jail. Um, we've learned that you can't just film whatever you want, whenever you want, why ever you want, and expect to keep your job. I mean, shit, I've learned that years of doing this stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forever waiting for, like, to get to a job interview and have them be like, so, we Googled you and, and just be like, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> I'll just be going. And finally, we've learned um, you, you can't just... It's, it's 2019. Capitalism is king. We have legal marijuana. You can't just shove a bush into a minivan and expect to make a buck in this economy. Well, that sounds like the title to a terrible porn. <laughs> <laughs> At least that isn't trying to shove the minivan into the bush. <laughs>